Alright guys, we're on uh, <clears throat> problem 9 from the fundamental problems in chapter 4, the Hebler, the Hebler statics book. All right. And again, one of pretty much the first nine problems we've just we've been determining the moment about uh, a certain point and that point's been O the whole time, the origin. <clears throat> okay. So before you start just you know breaking stuff down in this problem, let's analyze it a little a little further. Okay. Here they give us this 30 degree angle. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can so they give us this angle here right and they also give us this angle all right which means that this force f1 is parallel to this pole okay and so we might we can use that to our advantage here all right and then another thing is that we know that if we extend a line right here this makes a 90 degree triangle, okay, where this will be 30 degrees, okay. And if you want to prove it, you can just, you know, just draw a bunch of lines everywhere and start drawing angles. So this is 30 and 30 because these two are parallel lines with the rod crossing through, okay. So if that's 30, and I, you know, and I'm saying this is 90 here, you know, this and this, this will be 60. And uh, and then that leaves this other 90 degree triangle, or 90 degree angle. That means if this is 60, then that has to be 30 in here. Okay, and I'm just gonna delete that so I can make this a little cleaner. It's gonna draw. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, what the heck? Let's just okay. So let's just come back to this. Okay, so that means I only have to if this is parallel. If this force, right? is parallel to the rod. So, if, you know, this, if we say the line of action goes this way, this way, this way, I only have to multiply it by this distance over here. Because, you know, that's the perpendicular distance between the force and the, and, uh, and the distance to the pivot point. Okay. And then this F, this 200 pound force over here, that's the one we have to break into, um, you know, X and Y components. I guess in this case, I'm going to save my X and Y are this way. It's going to make it crooked just because they did it crooked as well. Okay. So this 200, right? And if this is 30 in here, this 200 pound force will be, uh, if we say, if we want to break it into the X axis, okay, the, the X component, again, the X will take the cosine because I'm giving the angle with the horizontal. Okay, so this this is where my 200 cosine 30 is gonna lay. So it's gonna be like this. I'm just gonna keep extending it just so you guys can see it a little better. This is my 200 cosine 30, and then this is you know, 200 sine. But there's one thing that you can see right away is that this force, if you keep, draw a line of action for it, it intersects point O, which means it's not contributing any torque. So we don't have to even worry about this one, right? So a problem, it becomes very simple after this because now we're gonna have that F1 force that's hiding over here underneath the blue, okay? So that, we said that F1 force times this green distance, right, which is just gonna be, uh, oh man, let's go back to that. This green distance is going to be six 
cosine 30, right? Because it's the it's this side of the triangle, okay? The the adjacent side to this 30 degree, okay? So now I'm gonna have my my force F1, right? You, it keeps extending this way, multiplied by this green distance, which is uh, I guess I drew it in orange, okay? So it's going to be okay. Let's uh, let's make this. So again, M resultant by O. Okay, it's going to be F1 times 6 cosine 30. Okay. And then 200 cosine 30 times what distance? Well, let's see. Let's extend the the line of action of this one this way and it's going to be that six feet distance okay 200 times six okay so now if i were to yank this towards the left like it's like this force is doing the 200 pound force is doing it's going to make it rotate kind of clockwise okay so it's going to be positive and f1 Again, if, if you pull on it in the direction of F1, you're going to make it rotate counterclockwise as well. All right? And those are the only two forces that we need to uh, compute the moment being transferred to point O. All right, so this will be 300 times 6 times cosine 30. And one, one thing I would recommend in your exams and homeworks is before you even put your pencil, you know, let your pencil touch the the paper is like just take 30 seconds to think about, hmm, like, you know, try to find a shortcut. And if you don't see one, then just approach it the old fashioned way. 200 times cosine 30 times 6. Okay, so summing those up, plus one five five eight point eight. <coughs> we have two five nine eight point zero um, pound feet. Okay. And uh, you know, here everything's given to three sig fig sig figs, like that's the largest uh, one they give us. So you could just say like, you know, round this up because we want to have three sig figs. So we could say like two six hundred feet, pound uh, feet. Okay, but that won't matter. Um, your TAs will understand. Okay. Nice guys. So far, I hope this has all been clear because I believe the next few questions that we'll be tackling are going to involve uh, 3D uh, moments, which will involve the curl and the terminal and all that. So we'll get to that right after this. All right, guys. See you in the next video.